one of the biggest questions I get from a lot of sellers out there is, how do I price my items? How do I find comps for it? You know, when do I reprice my items? When do I lower it? So we're gonna do deep dive on that today. Welcome to Flipping and Punching, and today we're gonna pull some eBay orders. We got like 20 something eBay orders going out for over a grand. And then uh, we did get a, a Poshmark sale. Did we had, did we have a whatnot sale? Yeah, I don't know, I need to check it. We did sell some stuff with some other platforms. So we're gonna pull those orders and then we're gonna talk about how to price your items to sell on eBay or any other platform. It's one of the biggest questions I get, especially when, new, especially when people can't find comps or they can't find the price of an item. You know, it's not as simple as just looking up a comp. There's a couple of things you guys should do when you look up comps and a lot of people don't. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that and the importance of knowing the market. And we're also talking about all the little nuances that go into pricing an item. So let's jump in, pull some orders first. All right, first item we sold today is the Snow White. It's actually a Snow White doll. This came from that big private pick I went to. I paid $75 for this massive box of all kinds of different items. I've already sold some of the items and whatnot. I probably got maybe, I don't know, like 15, 20 bucks for the other items I put, I put through whatnot already. So I got back a little portion of my money and then we sold this Snow White doll. Kind of a cool piece. Had this listed for $24.99. Buyer sent me an offer for $20 and I accepted. So I got $20 plus shipping on this. All right, first thing, we actually sold a couple of Disney pins here, so let's pull them. All right, first one we sold is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Uh, this is a roller coaster at Disneyland. Had a listed for $19.99. Sent an offer for $16.99. The buyer accepted, so $16.99 plus shipping. You've seen me sell this one before. It is a police officer, security officer badge. Had this one listed for $29.99. Buyer sent me an offer for $15. I counted at $19.99 and they accepted. So we at $19.99 plus shipping. Both those I have less than three bucks into and I've already made my money back. So this is pure profit. One of the biggest questions I always get from people is how do I price my items? So when I search for comps, I do two different things. One is I always search for the most recent comp because you want to know what the current market value is. So when I search my eBay, I always search, you know, latest comps first. But I then turn my listing from highest to lowest so I see the highest sold comp and the lowest. <clears throat> I, then I search then I search sold comps from highest to lowest. The reason why I do that here is it's actually a big reason why. Certain items, there are a lot of variants to those items and you may have something that you may not even know about. So I always search from highest to lowest because there may be a, something that you're missing and that you don't know and you don't want to price it like the regular items are. And especially when it comes to like video games or action figures, I've done that before and I have found some big discrepancies in price where let's say the market was going for like 50 bucks and then I search from highest to lowest and there's one selling for 200. Well, there's a slight variation to that one that I didn't know about and you may have that variation. So it's always good to do that. Take the extra second to do that. Now, I don't do that with everything. Like if I'm buying a pair of jeans, like jeans are gonna be jeans, you know, there's not gonna be many slight variations when it comes to that. That's more or less for like video games and collectible items, antiques, you just never know. Also too, condition plays a big factor in the pricing because if you're searching, you know, maybe the comps are at 50 bucks for an item, but your item is, looks like mint fresh out of the box so you could ask for maybe at the highest where the market is so say there's some items that have sold for like 75 in the past you may be asked for 75 dollars just because your item is minty fresh so condition does play into that so you guys need to factor in conditioning but also too you don't want to overprice the market my last video i showed you guys all those magazines i was working on we did pull out all the the ones i thought can bring a premium and then the rest we put in big lots I already sold those heavy metal lots, which was great. One thing I didn't tell you is the guy messaged me after I sold those. Want to know if I had any other heavy metal magazines that he'd be willing to buy them. So I did find four more that were doubles. And I just sent him a message. Hey, if you want these 10 bucks free shipping. And I added it to his, his shipping and sent it off to him. So hopefully he'll be very happy with those. Gave him a great deal. But um, we did sell a bunch of magazines. Pet Cemetery we sold. Got 12 bucks for that one. Beetle juice we sold. I think we got 12 bucks for that one too. We did sell Scream. We got 12 bucks on that one. And I think we sold this one here. We sold Nightmare on Elm Street for 12 bucks. So I listed those individually because they had key horror figures on the covers and those guys usually bring a premium. 
had them listed all for $14.99. And I think the buyer sent me an offer for 10 bucks on the Beetlejuice, which I accepted. And all the other ones he sent me an offer for 12 bucks a piece, which I was glad they accepted because one buyer buying four magazines at an average of you know 10 11 bucks a piece we'll do it all day long so i think we got 46 bucks for those four and i paid maybe 25 cents 50 cents a magazine so great profit on those we did sell a james bond magazine all right james bond so let's see here this heavy metal fetish cover this one right here james bond so this one here that James Bond magazine I had listed for $29.99. Uh, buyer sent me an offer. Did I send them an offer? I don't know. We ended up selling that thing for like $24, 25 bucks plus shipping. So once again, came from the same lot of magazines. So I'm going to do really, really good on these. I always talk about how important it is to factor in the accessories to when you're doing bulk pickups or bulk buys. And here's another reason why. We sold this right here. And this is another Dizzy pin carrying case. All it is, you just stick your pins in here. That's it. So people can carry the pins around. Had that listed for $49.99. Buyer sent me an offer for $40. Bucks and I accepted. So I got $40 bucks plus shipping. Now I bring this up because like I was talking about in my last video, I bought this massive pin buy. The books were never factored into the overall call, the overall buy. So I was buying per pin. So I was paying roughly like two or three bucks per pin when I did this massive buy. A lot of these pins came in these carrying cases. These carrying cases are bringing me so far. So two, one for 35 and this one for 40. So that's actually 75 dollars so when you guys are buying lots sometimes you can pay up compared to other sellers for stuff because you have to factor in the accessories the other items that come with it that's all gravy on top now the question is how do you price your items you know you don't want to be the lowest one on there because then it's a race to the bottom you don't want to be the highest on there because once again your items are probably going to sit there for a while before it sells so what i try to do is i try to look at what the go the overall average of the market is and try to price it around there and that's very difficult for me. I will still say I still have some diff issues with that because I have a tendency to price my items higher sometimes because I deal with a lot of high end collect I deal with a lot of high end collectors and I know they will pay it for items. But I also have to be realistic where I, I'm running a business where I need to flip stuff and get keep that capital coming in. So what I've been doing now is I've been trying to price my item right at market where the market comps recently have been. Unless I have some type of spectacular item that I know a buyer's gonna come in and pay for later on or pay up for an item, where I will price it above market comps. That's gonna come down to the rarity of the item or the condition of the item. Because if the condition of the items are you know, excellent condition, mint condition, collectors will pay a premium for those. All right, next item we sold is a pair of shorts. Now this is actually from the Motor City Bowl. These are actually team issued shorts. Had these listed, I think, for, I overpriced these. I had these listed for like $79.99. No one else had these. So I listed them super high, just kind of test out the market. Ended up lowering the price. Ended up selling these for $59.99 plus shipping. But that brings me to a good point. What happens if you can't find a comp for your item? You have a unique item, a one-off item. What do you guys normally do? Two different ways you can look at this. Number one is there should always be a comp for an item out there. It may not have sold on eBay in the last 90 days. It may have sold on eBay in the past. So... If you can't find if you can't find a comp that goes back within the last 90 days on eBay, if you go on Terra Peak on eBay, you can actually go back up to three years to try to look for it. If you still can't find a comp for that item, look up similar items. What is something very similar to that? What is the going rate for, for that item? So what I normally do is I'll look at similar items, see what they're they're normally selling for. Then if I still can't get a comp, I'll check worth point. Now, worth point is something you have to pay for. I pay like 26 bucks a month for but it goes back 10 years of eBay data and auction house data. Usually a lot of these collectibles I find aren't, haven't sold on eBay. Like a lot of these Dizzy pins I have, like employee ones or cast member ones, haven't sold on eBay in the last 90 days or maybe the last year or two. So I'm able to search um, the past 10 years on eBay and find comps for some of these. I do pay $26 a month for WorthPoint. It's not, I don't recommend everyone do that because depending on what you're selling, you may not need to use WorthPoint. But for me, since I buy a big collection sometimes, I do find a lot of one-off items. It's worth it for me being a full-time seller. If you're doing it part-time, it probably won't be worth free to get. But I did get that and I'm able to go back 10 years. I got a Disney pin. The employee worked at Disney for 45 years to get this pin. You can find those anywhere. I mean, how many employees working at Disney for 45 years? You know, it's just probably a handful there right now. So I couldn't find any comps. Um, I did find some comps that went back a couple years. The last one sold for $1,500. Now, knowing how rare this item was, 
I thought that I could at least get fifteen hundred dollars for it, maybe get two thousand dollars for it. So I actually listed on eBay for two thousand dollars or best offer, and I had a ton of watches on it, and someone actually just bought out right for two thousand dollars. That's a one-off situation where when you have an item that's that you know is super rare, you can find the last comp. If it hasn't been listed in a while, you can literally ask for that market value or maybe a little higher. So situations like that, I always list higher and then because it's always a lot easier to, for me to lower my price over time. If I have a one-off item I can't find comps for. Now I could have put it up for auction, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because at auction, I may have gotten 800 bucks, thousand bucks for that pin. It just would have fell to the wayside because there's probably not a lot of people that were going to pay up. You know, not a lot. I mean, think about this. I mean, the pin's the size of my, my thumbnail. Like how many people have $1,500 laying around to buy a pin? So keep that in mind. But yeah, if you guys do find one-off items, another option is if you guys can't find any comps anywhere and... I would just list it super high, best offer, let the market dictate what the price is. And then if you don't get any watchers, you're not getting a lot of views, maybe lower that price over the next couple of weeks, next month or so, and until you get you know some action on it. There are rare situations where I would recommend starting an auction, but for this one, it just was, wasn't really worth it for me. So especially just being a one-off, I'm taking a risk. I'd rather start high and try to get some to buy. All right, next time we sold is a pair of OnCloud shoes. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this brand, this is definitely a bolo. If you do find them, pick them up. I actually have a pair. My wife has a pair. They are excellent shoes. Probably one of the best sneakers I've ever worn. On Cloud, that's what the logo looks like, guys. If you guys do see that. These are the Rogers. Swiss Engineering. But they're super comfortable. For those who don't know, my wife works in the medical industry. She, she is a nurse. So when she's on her feet for a 12-hour shift, she needs really good, comfortable shoes. She used to have Hoka's, um, she's used OnCloud, she used Nike's, but she said of all the shoes, the OnClouds are her favorite, most comfortable. So I invested in a pair of shoes, I paid about 150 bucks for my OnClouds, and best one of the best pairs of sneakers I ever bought. So highly recommend it. These, I picked up for five bucks at a yard sale. Had it listed for $69.99, towards the higher end of the market, but I did a best offer on. Buyer sent me an offer for 45 bucks plus shipping. After looking at comps, I realized I priced it to the higher end of the market. I mean, a lot of comps were 45 to 55 bucks, and I had a price higher. I mean, even though there were some that did sell there, and speak, since I only paid five bucks for it, I said, screw it. We'll take the 45 bucks and run. So I got 45 bucks plus shipping. If you guys saw my latest picking videos, I picked up a huge lot of punk CDs and rock CDs. I'm doing really well with them. So we had a couple CD sales. We sold Helmet. Uh, it's actually three CDs. This sold a little bit less than what I wanted it to, to be honest. I think I had it listed for $14.99. I was gonna take, I would take like 10 bucks for them and someone sent me an offer for $9. I'm not gonna go back and forth over dollars. So I just accept it. So I got $9 plus shipping. I've already made my money back on all these. So this is just pure profit this time. But what I normally do is the bands that really aren't worth it. I would normally put them all in a giant lot. But if I have a single band with like multiple CDs and I get, if I can list it for like 15 bucks, I'll list them up individually like that. Take best offers and stuff when it happens. Just like this next CD we sold. This is local local H good as dead. Now, one thing to keep in mind is look at this right here. It says for promotional use only, no sales allowed, must be returned on demand of copyright owner. These are promotional CDs that were sent off to like TV stations, to media outlets, radio stations for people to play it, listen to it. So if you do find these, sometimes they bring a premium depending on the band. But I had this listed for $14.99. Someone sent me an offer for $10 and I accepted. So I had $10 plus shipping. I don't mind selling media for like 10 bucks because it's simple. Take a picture front and back and literally scan the barcode and I can get it listed in less than two minutes. So since everything's pure profit, if I can make 10 bucks for two minutes of worth of work, I'll do that all day long. I absolutely love living in Florida, but let me tell you, these summer months are rough right now, especially when you're reselling and you work in a garage or storage or it's super hot. But we sold two comic books now. This brings me to my next point about pricing, and that's talking about repricing items or when to lower your items if you price them too high. And we're gonna talk about that here in a second, but let me show you show you what I sold. All right, first one is a G.I. Joe comic book. This is G.I. Joe, and this is number 26. This is the origin of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, Death of the Hard Master. So this is actually a key book. Is a 9.6 white pages. Had this listed, I think for maybe $139.99 or $149.99. Buyer sent me an offer for $115 plus shipping. I took it. So I got $115 bucks plus shipping. This has been in my 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 uh, store for probably 
man, a year and a half now, two years, I don't know, but decided to take the offer on it. When it moved, G I, be careful guys, G.I. Joe stuff and Transformer stuff gets super hot because they're putting together, a, a, um, they're actually putting together a multiverse which has Transformers and G.I. Joes in the same universe, same universe together. And they're gonna be doing maybe a movie or some cartoons with that in the future. So being on the lookout for Transformers and G.I. Joe stuff here coming up soon. All right, this next time I had it listed up high. I had it listed up for $129. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 324. Now, this is a solo appearance from, you have appearances from Sabretooth, you know, Captain America. It's not really a key book, but what makes this a, an important book is Todd McFarlane. So if you ever seen Spider-Man and Incredible Hulk with that logo right there, that's Todd McFarlane, his signature on the front of it. Well, that's Todd McFarlane's logo on the cover. He did the, uh, Todd McFarlane did a run from like, I want to say like 294. The 296 to like 329, 330, I don't know, something like that. Tom McFarlane did the covers for Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man is a very hot book series, first to start off with. But Tom McFarlane, one of the most famous artists of all time, he did the covers for Amazing Spider-Man, I think from like 296 all the way up to like, I want to say like 329, three, there's some in that ballpark. So around the high 320s, right around 330. So even if it's not like a major key book, if it's in mint condition, you get graded, and it'll still bring a premium because of the Todd McFarlane cover. And I had this up, had this up from 129 I was saying before, buyer sent me an offer for 60 bucks. Which at first I was offended, like oh, 60 bucks, that's below 50%. But I started looking at comps and unfortunately, these have dropped tremendously and these are selling for like 60, 70 bucks right now. So I didn't even counter offer, I just took it. 60 bucks plus shipping. I have literally no more than 30 bucks into this comic book because I, I bought a massive collection on cents on the dollar, so I get probably 10 cents into the book. Pressing and grading cost me about 30 bucks. So at the end of the day, I'm still making a profit. I'm moving old product. I priced that right after the pandemic where everything was super high with comic books. So the market has fluctuated. So that brings me to the next point. So one thing that I've been doing with some items, I've been in my eBay store, anything over, uh, anything over three months, now, a lot of people can run sales on it, but I've been re I've been ending my listings and selling similar. Part of the reason I've been doing that here is because I want to get a fresh listing up so I can cross list at the, all the other platforms. But one thing I noticed is a lot of these items have been sitting in my store for a while and it's because I've overpriced them. So when you're dealing with collectibles like sports cards, comic books, video games, the market does fluctuate and especially like sports cards, they're going to fluctuate per, by the day. So you see a drastic jump up or drastic jump down, depending on what's happening. So comic books are a little bit slower movers when it comes to that, but they can have some, some fluctuation in the marketplace. So unfortunately, a lot of the graded comic books I do have have gone down over the last two years. I mean, I'm still gonna make a pro, I'll still make a profit on them, just not quite as what it once was. I still enjoy them. Enjoy them. So brings me to the point, when you have your stuff in the eBay store, just don't, don't set it and forget it like some people say. Is, you need to reevaluate your store every couple months to see if the items you have in there are overpriced or the market has changed. So always do a temp check on your store and the items in there because sometimes they may need to be ended, sell similar, lower the price, or maybe do a drastic discount on that category where instead of doing a normal 10, 15% off, you're doing like 40% off because you know the market has changed dramatically. So always keep that in mind because the most important thing about running a reselling business is that you wanna have the cash flow coming in, and not tie up all your money, when, especially when a private buy can come or when you get a call for to do a, a big buy. I totally forgot to tell you guys, I got great news. We did get Blue's report back on her lump from the lab and it is non-cancerous. So I am very grateful because we love that dog tremendously. That is my, dog, that is my wife's soulmate. And if something would ever happen to that dog, we would be absolutely devastated. So. I am so happy that she is good. So thank you for all the kind words. People were commenting on my video, wishing her the best. And last night, my whatnot too, people were asking me questions. So I want to give you guys an update. She is good right now. So when I did take her to the vet to get those get to get stitches put back in, they decided not to put stitches in her. So that's another plus too, because I didn't want to put her back under again. I hate putting my, my pets under sedation because you never know, you know what could potentially happen. So... All right, next time we sold, we sold a bunch of books. So let's pull those. Sold a stack of Demon Slayer books. You can see Willow there hanging out. 
Got these at a yard sale. I paid probably like a buck a piece, if that. Anytime I'm at a yard sale, I can find anime books for at least a buck or less. I pick them up or buy them in big lots. I bought those in a massive lot. Some of the other ones sold for hundreds of dollars. These we end up getting, I don't know, maybe like $12.99 or $13.99 plus shipping. They were a little bit slower sellers. I'm just glad to see them go. We sold this in the last video. I had multiple copies of it. Now, it's funny, once one sells, the other ones usually always sell. This is Batman. The greatest Batman story ever told. Uh, we got $6.99 plus shipping for that, but it was multi-quantity listing. That's why I'm okay with that. This is the magazine. Or that, this is actually a catalog from Scale Electrics. We had a whole bunch of these up. This is what's just left over. We had it listed for 12 bucks. Someone sent an offer for like $7.50 and we took it. I'm just happy to see it go. It's like one of the last ones we had left. And then as I was pulling those orders, I heard cha-ching and someone sent me a best offer in this next book. Had this little one listed for $19.99. Buyer sent me an offer for 15 bucks. So I took it. They just haven't paid yet. So I'm waiting for the buyer to pay so I can ship that off. But I decided to pull it since I'm already pulling orders and packing these items up. I absolutely love when I'm pulling orders and an item sells because I can give the customer very quick and great customer service and ship that thing out super fast. Can you imagine buying something off eBay and then minutes later get a notification item has shipped already? Like that's great customer service. So um, hopefully they'll pay here soon so I get that shipped out because I'm actually going to the post office here in about an hour. So I'm very interested. How do you guys price your items? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys price top of the market? Do you guys try to be below market value? Do you try to be the lowest item out there? You gotta be very careful though if you are the lowest item out there because you don't wanna have a race to the bottom where then if someone else comes in and lowers it and this is the item below your item, it's just gonna keep going, bring it down. But let me know how you guys price your items. All right guys, here's another bolo for you if you guys don't know this name. Mackenzie Childs, if you guys don't know that. High-end items, they do bring, they do bring really good money. This is like a picnic table checkered tablecloth, but there's actually, these are actually curtains um, i paid 60 bucks for four of these all together and i already sold two of the other ones i sold i think the other ones i sold for like 60 bucks each these two sold at full price at 79.99 each so we get 160 dollars plus shipping for the pair so we made we sold about 300 dollars in these already out of four of them and we paid 60 bucks for a lot so keep an eye out for this name because these do bring really good money Next item we sold is actually a Roman Reigns t-shirt. This was a Hot Topic, I think, exclusive. Roman Reigns, Hot Topic. There's the shirt, brand new. Bought this at a garage sale. I don't know, I think I either paid, I wanna say I paid like a buck or two for it, but had this list, I think, for $29.99. I think I sent an offer for $24.99, the buyer accepted, so got $24.99 plus shipping. Man, I will tell you, I had a great week sourcing. I really miss it. I absolutely love going to garage sales. I love going out there to find items, but I'm at the point now where I gotta be very careful because I don't want to oversource. Like I talked in my last video, I can't be oversourcing. I need to blow stuff out. You guys have seen me start doing a lot more whatnots and I'm gonna be moving away from doing a lot more Disney whatnots. One is I'm, <laughs> I'm running low on some of the Disney items. So I'm blowing through a lot of that, but I want to go back to running pretty much an everything show with toys, collectibles, you know, clothing, purses, glassware, a little bit of everything. I think they're more fun, they're more appealing to the general audience. I don't wanna exclude a lot of my viewers. I want you guys to come in, hang out, ask questions, have fun. So, and I'll give you guys a heads up. We are about, we are less than 400 followers away on Whatnot for doing another free show. If you guys been to those free shows, every time we hit a thousand new followers, we do a free show where we give back to the community. So we run it for about an hour, me and Mrs. Punchin, and we just give away everything for free. So if you guys aren't following me, Links down in the description down below. Give, give us a follow on there. And plus you get 15 bucks just for signing up if you're if you're not a member or whatnot. That you can use in my show or anyone else's show. But anyway, let's pull this last order here. We sold a vintage Ninja Turtle figure. Man, I always thought this was the coolest, one of the coolest villains back in the day. Rats are freaky and this is the Rat King. Comes with a bunch of the accessories. Had this listed for I think $29.99. Buyer sent me an offer for 20 bucks, whom I accepted. So at 20 bucks plus shipping on that. But anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap this up here. Thank you guys for all the support um, and all the comments you guys have been leaving on these videos here. I love it. I love the interaction with you guys. Also too, if there's something you guys want me to do a video on in the future, if it's something like a how-to video or if you have questions and stuff, leave it in the comments down below. I can make sure to try to answer these in future videos. Until next time guys, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching. <laughs>